Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're doing well. I wanna show you this project I'm working on, which is a card house with all these cards flipping on and animating. And I wanna walk you through this project really quick. So let's go ahead and show you the base element of this scene. It's uh, two plane objects that I made editable, and then I took the axis point and put it at the bottom of each card, and then I just animated them on. So I have two simple planes animating, and we wanna take this base animation and we want to clone it backwards and then offset the time. So the first thing we're gonna do is put it in a cloner object, of course, and we'll change the Y position to zero and we'll increase the Z position. And now we're pretty much set up so we can add as many clones as we want. So now we have to figure out how to offset this animation because right now it's happening all at the same time. So we need to add an effector to offset the time. Uh, you can use quite a few different effectors actually. You can use a plane effector, you can use a shader effector. Um, let me just walk you through those really quick. Uh, the plane effector, if we make sure it's added to our cloner. Um, let's turn off our position parameter. And at the bottom we have, um, let's see, right here, time offset. And if we turn up our time offset and hit play, uh, nothing's gonna happen until 25 frames and then it's going to start the animation uh, inside that cloner. Um, so now what we can do is use uh, the power of fall off to trigger that animation. So if we have a linear fall off, and we just set that up right here, and let's turn up the fall off to 100%, and let's hit play. Now we have that linear fall off of that time offset starting on the back and moving its way forward. And if you wanna flip it around, you can just take your uh, vector, rotate it 180 degrees, and it should go the other way. You can mess around with uh, the different fall off of this guy, make sure that's covering everything perfectly, and then you should have a uh, more predictable start and end. So that looks really good. Um, the other thing you can do is use a shader effector. So let's go to our shader effector. Let's make sure that it's added to our cloner. And let's turn off the scale. So a shader effector has this shading tab, which is different than the plane effector, which doesn't have it. So the shader effector takes uh, the, the white and the black of a different shader and it drives the animation with that. So if we just add a gradient, which goes from black to white, and then we go to our parameters, and again, we change our time offset, and then we hit play, we're gonna have a nice linear gradient that starts in the front and goes all the way to the back, and our time offset will be 20 frames, so we can kick up our time offset if we wanna slow it down, and then the time offset will be a lot longer. So this is a really powerful way to set up animations because you have two keyframes for each of these planes, and then it will populate that amongst your entire scene, and if you don't like it, just go back to your plane, and like if you want it to be a little bit slower, just move your keyframes over, and then the animation will be a lot slower of those cards flipping on, or you can make them a lot faster. So that's about it for that technique. Really fast way to set up your animation, and it makes it really easy to customize with just moving a couple keyframes around. Uh, you can take your null and duplicate it, move it over, you can go into that second one into the shader and change the time offset a little bit. And then you'll have two sets of cards, but they'll be a little bit different as far as the timing. So it'll look even better. And pretty soon you can stack these on top of each other and you'll have a really complicated looking card house, but it's really easy to set up. All right, that's it for me. I hope you learned something. Thank you as always for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time.